Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth from Alpus Astrology at alpusastrology.com. Thanks for joining me today. So today I am going to do um, my video on a Venus retrograde in Leo. And uh, this is actually a really interesting Venus retrograde and I think it's probably going to be significant for at least some of us. Um, Venus in Leo uh, stays in Leo for quite some time. So we're looking at it really starting at the beginning of June 2023 and then coming out of Leo um, around um, not quite mid-October. Uh, it goes into a, the first week of October 2023. So it's quite a long time where Venus stays in Leo, whether it's direct or um, retrograde. Uh, the actual retrograde starts on the 23rd of July 2023 at 28 degrees of Leo. And it will go direct at uh, 12 degrees of Leo uh, on the 2nd of September 2023. What's interesting is that this um, Venus, when it goes uh, retrograde at 28 degrees of Leo, will do so very close to the star Regulus. Now, for most of us, we were born with um, Regulus being at 28 degrees Leo. Most astrologers uh, nowadays... Uh, subscribe to the idea that Regulus has actually moved into around one degree of uh, Virgo, but it's still very close, uh, whichever way you want to cut it. Um, so I thought that was quite interesting too. Uh, and Regulus is a royal star, just like uh, Leo is a royal sign. Now, the last time we had uh, a Venus retrograde in Leo uh, was about eight years ago, but the thing is it went retrograde at zero degrees, 46 minutes of Virgo, and then went direct at 14 degrees of Leo. But this time it stays in Leo completely. So certainly for those folks that have um, something significant in Leo, you can expect some real activation here because it'll go direct, retrograde, and then direct again um, over those degrees, uh, anywhere between 12 degrees and 28 degrees of Leo, right? So it covers uh, a wide kind of uh, degree points um, almost all of them, if you think about it, um, for Leo. So when we look at um, the meaning of Venus in Leo, words like uh, desire for self-expression come up, uh, drama. Um, it's a fire sign, and I would say it's a very fiery fire sign. Um, it likes to express itself um, gracefully, and artistically, um, these uh, people that have their Venus in Leo tend to be tastemakers and trendsetters of fashion. So these may come more to, uh, and beauty by the way too, so these may come more to the uh, forefront too during that whole time period between June and October 2023. These folks are in love with love. So these are the kinds of things we're going to be feeling for, you know, many months where we really want to be um, appreciated. Um, we are going to be very happy. And um, like I said, there's going to be some drama as well surrounding at least some of us. But the main thing here is with Leo is Leo um, needs to, well, Venus and Leo, needs to express its love authentically um, and almost like without any um, anything holding it back. Leo isn't afraid to um, express, show, or tell the world uh, about how much they love somebody, right? So with all this love and drama and uh, desires, um, that's the type of thing that um, we're going to be radiating, right? So our soul is going to be at a fairly high level here with regards to love. Now classically, um, and you'll hear many astrologers uh, talking about this, a Venus retrograde means that uh, you could have a past love come back into your life. Or, uh, especially in Leo, perhaps a past a childhood friend of significance could come back in too. 
And for sure, for some folks, that may actually happen, especially, say, if you've got your own, uh, I would say if you've got your own Venus in Leo, but because the sun actually rules um, Leo, I would say those that have their sun as well. But certainly anything can be activated here if it's in Leo, right? And we can leave comments back and forth. Um, folks that um, remember what happened about eight years ago, maybe we can leave some comments to say um, what happened to you so we can say maybe that's going to happen again in some form uh, this year in 2023. So the other thing I looked at was um, the Sabian symbol for this. So we're looking at the Sabian symbol uh, of 29 degrees of Leo. You always round up. And it's a mermaid emerges from the ocean waves for rebirth in human form. So this certainly does speak to intense feelings. Uh, with the water being portrayed by the mermaid, we're also talking about intuition here, maybe even some psychic abilities. Um, and it's like the unconscious on the verge of taking form as conscious thought. So I guess this to me, when I, I read this, I thought, well, I guess as we should always be careful what thoughts we allow to occupy our mind, especially those that um, uh, tend to, you know, go over and over in our minds. This says to me, be careful what you wish for. That's what I thought this really said. Because what you wish for could become something real for you. So here I'm making this video in January 2023. So this gives all of us a chance to think about, well, what is it that I love? Right? And how can I radiate something from myself to attract that which I want? And certainly something like a vision board could be handy, right? Especially as you put a vision board together that really represents how you want to feel. So you don't necessarily have to put in, unless it really is significant, the actual um, color of this person's hair and their eyes. Um, and the fact that they must be handsome or pretty, um, but more to with the feeling of how I want to feel. Like say, I want to feel happy. So bright sunshine, uh, having fun with friends on the beach would be a good picture to pick, right? All right, the other thing that is also happening um, when Venus goes retrograde is that we're going to have a yod formed. So this adds another layer of significance to the Venus retrograde. And what we have is we have Pluto as well as Neptune, which will still be retrograde. Pluto will be at 29 degrees of Capricorn and uh, Neptune's going to be at 27 degrees of Pisces. And both of these planets, so they form the base, are going to be pointing, the yacht is going to be pointing to that Venus retrograde at 28 degrees of Leo. So this really does say that there's probably going to, I mean, just on a surface type thing, uh, to kind of generalize the effect of it, I would say that this says to me, there's going to be a lot of transformational power here with Pluto, and Neptune could bring in soulmate type energy when we look at that together with Venus. Uh, could really materialize for some folks over this time period uh, from June all the way through uh, the first part of October 2023. So I guess this just harks back to my earlier comment where um, I talked about the Sabian symbol. It's important that you have it very clear in your mind um, what uh, you value, uh, what you want to attract, um, and in kind what you're going to do or what you maybe need to do to attract that right person that you want in your, your life for love. Now, certainly the other thing that could be coming up, because Leo does rule um, a royalty as well as our Hollywood royalty, but in particular our royalty itself, um, we, we could have something happen uh, in the royal family. I mean, there are a number of royal families in the world. The most prominent or talked about one really is um, the British royal family. Um, but there's also other ones too. We've got Monaco as well, has a royal family as well. And in fact, uh, Princess Charlene 
may have some kind of uh, things happen around her uh, with regards to her home. Uh, perhaps she'll make her home um, in a different way or maybe have more than one home. Maybe she'll uh, manage to get back to South Africa uh, more often. But there's something up for her because uh, we have um, the Saturn is uh, at 28 of Leo in her fourth house. Um, and she has her sun as well as her midheaven uh, in Aquarius, which of course will be opposite to this um, Venus retrograde. And her moon is in Leo too. So certainly it does emphasize the royal part of her connection here. So the other thing that... Um, Generally speaking, when we talk about something like Leo being um, focused here as a sign, we're looking at royalty, like I said. We're also looking at fame. So there could be some folks that will, you know, rise to some level of fame somehow here. Um, recognition, that type of thing. Um, Leo the lion is the actual symbol of Leo. And of course, this talks to courage. So there may be other folks that um, have their courage come up um, in a big way where maybe they have to have the courage to approach um, the person they love. That's the other thing that could be going on as well. But Venus does talk about beauty and it also talks about money. And when we've got the Venus connected with loyal, uh, the royal sign of Leo, we could also be talking about clothing takes on some kind of different significance um, at this time too. So I'll look at some other people here that are well known in the world. We've got King Charles and King Charles Ascendant is at five degrees of Leo. He's got his Pluto at 16 uh, degrees of Leo. And nicely, he's got his Jupiter at 29 Sagittarius, which of course trines uh, Leo. So he may have some interesting things to say to the world, um, but he may also expand some things, uh, especially in terms of his, um, with the Sagittarius uh, Jupiter, um, looking at the, the long picture here, right, uh, for the royal family. So he may be actively involved in that over that time period that I spoke about. Uh, we also have Madonna. Um, interestingly, she's got her sun at 23 degrees and her Venus uh, at zero. And then her Uranus is actually at 12 degrees of Leo. So maybe she's going to reinvent herself uh, again and uh, entertain us as per usual. But what's interesting for her is all her Leo planets are actually in the 12th house. So it may have her doing some things of significance behind the scenes that not everyone sees right away. Okay, Meghan Markle, she has her son as well as her Mercury in Leo and her North Nodes. Her son is at 12 degrees of Leo. And so this is the degree that we have the um, Venus retrograde going direct at. Um, so maybe she will change up her image somehow. That's what I'm getting associated with that. But the other thing uh, in terms of like generations of people, we have, um, there'll be folks listening to this who were born in certain years in the 50s, in particular October 1955 to January 1956, and then again August 1956 and September 1956. Now those folks had Pluto at 28 degrees of Leo. So this Venus retrograde will activate the Pluto in their chart. And for some folks, this may actually involve some kind of transformation, um, maybe of themselves, maybe transformation of their love at a certain level. It could also, with Pluto too, it can refer to big money. So it could also be a time that people come into some money with this setup, right? With the, their natal Pluto being at 28 of Leo. But certainly Pluto, as a, an effect, likes to do gradual changes and transformation. Um, so we'll have to see. Keep, keep in touch with me, those folks that do have birthdays that I've just mentioned. Um, that I think would be interesting to see. Now there's another generation that actually has 
their natal Uranus at 28 of Leo. Now, Uranus acts suddenly and unexpectedly. So there may be some folks born September, October 1961, February 1962, and July of 1962 with Uranus at 28 degrees of Leo that have some sudden changes in their lives. And of course, you have to look at our individual charts to see both where Pluto is for those folks that have it at 28 Leo and for those folks that have Uranus at 28 Leo, you need to look at the house uh, for sudden potential changes. I mean, Uranus can also bring in enlightenment. So there may be some aha moments or epiphanies for some folks. I mean, there'd be, you know, especially potent effect if you not only have those um, planets natally, but if you also have something like, say, your sun, your moon, your ascendant, your midheaven, also at 28 degrees, that will add an extra emphasis for sure. All right, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go through some of the dates that stood out for me. Uh, there's going to be lots of other ones, and uh, as we maybe get closer to June and July, I'll maybe bring up more uh, dates and transits that are happening with regards to Venus being in Leo. Um, but I'm just going to bring up some ones that stood out for me. So all of June, and not only will we have Venus in Leo, but we're going to have uh, Mars there too. So I would say for folks, and, and of course, June is going to have Venus going direct. It will not be retrograde in June. So I think that's going to be interesting too. If I were going to pick a month for uh, new, dramatic, um, authentic, creative, um, either love or and or creative projects to start, I would pick June as a very good time to initiate something. Because although Mars will not be conjuncting Venus directly, Mars will be in Leo causing activation, right? So I saw June as a very favorable time, potentially for creative projects to start of any sort, as well as to start a new romance. Mars also gives you courage and gives energy too. So it gives a boost, right, to make things potentially happen. It can also activate um, in, in Leo, I mean, combined with that Venus, it could also bring money in for some folks that need it or even making more money at that time. I'll go through each of the, um, the ascendants and sun signs uh, towards the end of this video. And so we'll discuss then specifically for each of you and your ascendants, right, and sun signs. So on the 20th of June, we have Venus in uh, Leo going into shadow at 12 degrees of Leo. At the same time, we're gonna have Jupiter sextiling a retrograde Saturn at seven degrees exactly. This is going to be, as I said, the uh, shadow time period. So certainly if you are thinking of doing anything like um, major surgery of some sort, especially plastic surgery, and this is classic astrology or traditional astrology that I'm quoting, um, I, I certainly would avoid uh, any kind of um, big changes that you're going to make to yourself, um, especially any physical changes or beauty changes um, during the actual uh, retrograde period, um, for sure. But when we've got that Jupiter sextiling uh, Saturn, um, I think that's just opportunities here to potentially um, lay down some new structures, that type of thing. And maybe these structures will be related more to, say, money that you decide to do something with your money with regards to an opportunity, perhaps to save, right? To gather as opposed to spend. All right, so that's when the shadow period starts, is the 20th of June. On the 12th of July, we will have Mercury that's going to be in Leo. Um, and the 28th of July, that Mercury will conjunct a Venus retrograde at 28 degrees. So there's some messages being brought in here for some folks that are important. 
We could also hear something. This is the time when we may hear from people like the royal family, any royal family, with regards to some important message that has to be put out. Now, we will have uh, Venus going retrograde at that time when that message comes in. So there may have to be some correction um, to whatever messages are brought out. Now, the message uh, more than likely will have something to do with a female. But I would say that you're going to have to have this whole Venus go direct um, and go back over the 28 degree of Leo. So that's going to really be more like October 2023, where we're going to truly understand that message that was being brought in um, on the 12th of July. On the 13th of August, we, well, just before the 13th of August, I'll just emphasize, I've already mentioned it, that it's the 23rd of July, but I will again. The 23rd of July, we will have Venus going retrograde at 28 degrees of Leo. Okay, so following that, on the 13th of August, the ruler of Leo, which is the Sun, so this is going to be an important day all around, uh, is going to be conjunct that Venus retrograde at 20 degrees of Leo. So certainly if you've got something in your chart at 20 degrees of Leo, I would say it's going to be an important day for you on the 13th of August. Um, it could be for some folks, this literally may be somebody coming back into your life on this day if you've got something around the 20 degree mark. On the 16th of August, this is another important day, we're going to have a new moon in Leo at 23 degrees of Leo. So these could also be time points where um, I'm thinking that just because classic astrology says that um, Venus retrograde means a love coming back into our lives, I think another thing that can happen, especially because Venus is in Leo, and Leo represents, amongst many other things, true love, I think that this time period, whether it's Venus is retrograde or whether it's direct, could also be a time for some folks to develop a relationship. And maybe it'll be a new start in June and then July and maybe August. For some folks, there's some delay or there's some rethinking or there is literally um, an analysis going on in some folks' minds with regards to a new relationship where they're asking themselves, um, is this what I want? Is this true love? And that that's the activity that happens for some folks with this Venus retrograde or Venus direct. And that for some folks, they may make some decisions once Venus goes direct at the beginning of September 2023. On the 20th of August, we have the Sun trining the North Nodes. And of course, at that time, the North Nodes are going to be in Aries at 26 degrees of Leo, 26 degrees of Aries. So this is also a time period. If you've got something, say, around 26 degrees of Leo, you may make some destiny decision in your love life at this time. But it can also be a time that someone lucky for you and your destiny may come in at this time because the north nodes are very much tied in with our destiny path, right? And the sun rules the sign of Leo. So another important date, especially if you've got something around 26 degrees of Leo. Um, Venus in Leo is going to square Jupiter now in Taurus. Um, and that's going to happen around the time period. It's going to happen three times between June and mid-September. So this is kind of like throwing the spanner in the works here, where um, some folks may, with the square, I mean, it's hard to get a bad aspect with Jupiter. That's the positive side of this. But on the negative side, Jupiter in a square can mm, make things grow too quickly or um, make us feel too optimistic. And what is it going to be too optimistic about? The love that we think is true love. So this may be a time period, and of course this is the time period that Venus is going to be at least partially 
going to be retrograde, where we may fall in love or think we're in love. And then as the square happens, question that, right? And as I said, it's three times that it actually does this between June and mid-September. So there's going to be some checkpoints um, during this time period, mostly during the summer of 2023, where it's not going to be all pushing forward with this uh, dramatic royal true love, uh, but that we're also going to be uh, doing some checks on things and saying, I got to make sure about this. And I think this type of activity is good at any time when we're falling in love, but it's going to be emphasized for a lot of folks during this time period, mostly during the summer of 2023. All right. On the 4th of September, um, Venus now, of course, is direct and it'll be at 12 degrees. So again, go back to your charts, see if you've got anything around the 12 degree mark of Leo. But this is going to now see um, some optimism with regards to whether or not we want to keep a past love in our life for the present and the future, whether a new relationship that start is the right one for us, or we may also take this time to decide to change up our appearance. Maybe we took the summer months to experiment with different things or look at different things, but didn't, didn't pull the trigger with regards to changing either something to do with our beauty uh, anything to do with our, our clothing. It can be tied into that as well. But then we decide at the 4th of September and onwards, um, yeah, I'm going to do some changes here. The 15th September, uh, Mercury uh, going uh, direct will be at 8 degrees of, um, of Virgo. So that's also another, even though it's not directly connected in with the Venus retrograde, it's a retrograde uh, that now is going to be going uh, direct. So messages, uh, you know, Mercury does rule uh, the sign of Virgo. So there's going to be probably some messages coming in around the 15th of September that may be important for some folks. Or, and the facts can come up, the real facts that are important. And that might be tied in with something to do with a love in our life. But it could be also more money too, right? Venus can represent money. The 30th of September, uh, we will have Venus now going direct, square Uranus at 15 uh, of Leo, and of course, 15 of um, Taurus. So this could have also like a spanner in the works again, right? Now, the positive side of this is that Venus is going to be direct at this time, um, and it's halfway through the sign. But squaring Uranus, I would say this could, uh, it could be a couple things. It could be that on the 30th of September, some folks break up. That, you know, it was a great summer of love, but this isn't for me. And there's some big breakup that happens. But I think also Venus will certainly uh, soften the edges of that square. So it could also bring in a sudden relationship of some sort too, even though it's a square. We're still talking about Leo here, right? And uh, Leo wanting to express its authentic self. On the 2nd of October, Venus, obviously direct, will be trining the North Nodes. And I think this is also a favorable time too. So this is going to point more to our, um, if you just couple these energies together, the North Nodes is our destiny. Venus can be money. Um, more than likely, it'll be connected with love because we still have it in Leo. So this is um, Venus being at 24 degrees of Leo and the North Nodes being at 24 degrees of um, Aries. It could also, I was thinking if we take Venus uh, in, in the realm of money, this could have a course correction of some sort with regards to our global economy, right? And our, our global destiny path with regards to our money. Um, there may be a tie-in, though, with regards to um, creatively working with money and our destiny with our money. Uh, we'll just have to see how that plays out. Because, of course, with um, the North Nodes being in Aries, and Aries being uh, the start of the natural zodiac, there's some new initiation here, right? But there's a creative element uh, that's part of that. On the 7th of October, we will have Venus 
out of shadow at 28 degrees of Leo. So I think that is going to be, um, if you want to aim for a sure time period uh, when um, some um, beauty thing that you might want to do to yourself uh, will go right, <laughs> um, you might want to wait to the 7th of October when Venus will be completely out of shadow at that time. And of course, just to go back again to uh, some of the generations that were born with Pluto in uh, at 28 degrees of Leo and those that were born with Uranus at 28 degrees of Leo, you'll have a final activation with Venus going forward um, and some of the changes uh, that may, depending where this falls, what house it is in yours, they may. this may also be another time point where um, transformation for some folks and maybe some surprises, maybe some enlightenments for other folks too. All right, so next what I'm going to do is um, look at uh, the ascendants and or the sun signs. All right, Aquarius. So we know that Leo is in your opposite uh, house, right? So the opposite house to your first house, which is Aquarius, is Leo and it's your seventh house of partners. So this could bring in a few things, depending what either you want or you have in your life at this time. So because it's Leo, um, we're going to lean more notably towards love, because Leo represents true love. So for most Aquarians, it's going to be activated in that way. So it'll be a partner that you're in love with. And this is an opposition to your sign. So this could play out in a few ways. It could have you, in a fun way, Leo's all about fun too, sparring with a partner. So it could be sparks going off back and forth through a partner. Uh, but this will be a serious partner of some sort. More than likely, it's going to be to do with love and not business. But because Venus also represents money, it could be that and or, right? Um, Venus softens all the energy. So if there's any negative energy going on, I would say that there's going to still be some benefits for you. It could have your partner receiving some benefits of some sort, right? So this is Venus in your seventh house. Um, and you could benefit from those. Um, it could also have your partner shining a little bit, and maybe you have a little bit of envy regarding that. I would say try not to go that route because uh, you'll probably benefit from your partner. Either your partner comes to prominence of some sort, and for some, maybe someone gaining some fame. Um, it could also be a time when you have a favorable other, so that other expert could be a lawyer, an advisor, any kind, uh, comes in to help you plan maybe something out for yourself in any area of your life. So that's the other thing that the seventh house can represent is any other. Typically it's an other that you sign a contract with. But those can bring benefit to you too. And for a few Aquarius, I would say that this could be a time when a marriage partner comes literally into view. <laughs> and you take the Venus retrograde time period to truly look carefully at, is this true love? Take care, Aquarius. All right, well, that wraps up my actual Venus in Leo, whether it's retrograde and or direct. But I did want to add in here at the end of the video uh, a notation to folks that, you know, next year in 2024 in December, we're actually going to have a Mars retrograde and it's going to actually be in Leo. So it's very interesting that um, it's not going to go over exactly the same um, degree points uh, and it will dip into um, Cancer as well. But I thought that was really interesting. So I think that for some folks, and I'll talk about this um, Mars retrograde in Leo, you know, much later. 
But just know that probably um, in December 2024, as well as January, you may have some, um, some kind of reworking that you might have to do where you may have to take your energy, that's Mars, and rework some of the areas that you developed while we had Venus in Leo. So for some folks, that's going to be money. Some folks, that's going to be love. Some folks, it's going to be value of yourself um, and even possessions as well, right? All right, folks, take care of yourself. As always, I love doing astrology. If you want me to do your chart, all my contact info is below. Please reach out to me. Um, and take care of yourself. I would say um, have lots of fun this summer. Leo is all about having fun. Um, live life large and, and never stop loving. I think the big, big thing for me is love of yourself and let that love of yourself radiate out to others, especially over June to October 2023. Because you're going to have, for some folks, whatever love you've got radiating out of you, that's going to come back in spades over the summertime period. Take care. Sending you lots of love. Bye for now.